forward, we're propelled uh, by that knowledge uh, and the, the revelation of Jesus Christ in us. Uh, you know, it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And, and so we're excited about this series. Uh, and again, I'm going to uh, just turn it over to Brother Fred so he can get started tonight. We're excited about it. <clears throat> We're going to be talking tonight about identity, but the whole series is from identity to destiny. They're very much tied together. If you don't know your identity, then you don't have hope and you don't have purpose. So it's very important. It's a very important topic. And it was the Lord that said uh, to begin to look at identity. And that's the reason we're starting here tonight, identity. And uh, we need to know who we are. And I would like for us to begin by looking at an image because this is a, a concept that the Lord put in my heart. I'm going to ask Sherry uh, to show us a couple of uh, slides PowerPoint slides, uh, if, if you can, and, okay, all right, uh, can you see, can you see the image? Does it look like they can see it? Uh, can you see the image? Yeah, yeah we can see it. Okay. Yeah. okay, now, this is a concept that the Lord put in my heart, that <clears throat> we started out as a caterpillar, but we're moving and being transformed into a butterfly. And uh, this is like Jesus taught. He taught about natural things so we could understand uh, heavenly things. And that's the way I want us to look at it, that uh, we all were like this caterpillar. Now, what's very interesting is that Jesus, in uh, Psalm 22, he became a worm so that we could become a butterfly. Mm. Woo! <clears throat> psalm 22, 6. And this psalm is about uh, Jesus hanging on the cross. He said, in this psalm, he said, uh, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And this is where he said, I see all my bones and people are scorning me and mocking at me. And, and so this is really uh, the story of the cross. Uh, when we saw it uh, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, and John, we, we get a little bit of a picture, but we see more of it, what he's thinking about and what he's looking at, and that's in Psalm 22. But one of the things that he says in Psalm uh, 22, 6 is that he became a worm. He was a worm. Uh, so he became that worm that, in this case, it looks like a caterpillar, but it was a very special worm that he became. <laughs> Jesus became a worm. It was called a, a tola. And uh, it, from that worm, uh, they would send out the children around the kingdom, and they would go out and, and pick up these worms. And, and another name for it is crimson and, and scarlet because they would take this worm that Jesus became, and they would dry it and crush it and make a red dye out of it, and only the king's garment could be dyed with the uh, red that came from the worm that Jesus was, and so you are kings, and you've been washed in the blood of Jesus, so we, we became, we started out in this process as a caterpillar, and then we're being transformed uh, into this butterfly, uh, and let's go to the next uh, slide. And this is the second. Uh, have we gone that now? Just point on, click on that slide up there. Okay. I've just added three words here. Uh, that's the starting point. That's the starting point is that we are, we are the caterpillar. That, and that's our old life. That's the old life. You know, he said, uh, put on the new life. Get, Put on the new man. Put on the new man. Put off, take off the old man, put on the new man. So we, we started as this caterpillar and, and Jesus became that worm for us so that we could go through this transformation process and become the butterfly. But what's interesting, you notice I've got a start and I've got a goal. The beginning then is the old man, that's the caterpillar, and the uh, place where we're headed and 
being conformed to the image of Christ, that's the butterfly. But I've got a, also got a midpoint, and the midpoint is you are here. This is where we are. We are in the transform, transformation process. Uh, we haven't arrived. You know, Paul wrote in Philippians 3.13 that I haven't attained yet. He, he didn't make it all. I, I haven't gotten to the goal, but I'm press, I know where I'm headed. So you know you need to know your identity so you know where you're going. Paul said, I, I press on uh, to the goal of the high calling. I, I'm pressing on into it, but I and, and you think, oh Paul, surely he he would have made it by that time. He, he's writing uh to the Philippians, uh, and this is late in his life. And, and you think, well, he he surely he's made it, but he hasn't gotten there yet. We're always in this process. Um you know, First John 3, 2 says that it's not yet apparent what we're going to be. So we don't know what we're going to be yet. We're still in that process of being conformed to the image of Christ. Uh, and in Second uh, Corinthians 3, it says that we are being uh, changed from glory to glory. So we haven't gotten over being changed. We're still in the transformation process. Now I'm going to ask Sherry to uh, end this and so I can see your faces, but that's the concept we're looking at. We, we have a goal, we have a place we want to be and that is to be that uh, butterfly in this case. And, and, and you might say, well, uh, you've already attained it and good, if you have, that's good. But uh, I, I believe the rest of us that we're still in that process. <laughs> of being conformed uh, to the image of Christ. And uh, what keeps us uh, from being uh, the image of, it, it's the negativity things that are in us, the negative things that are in us. And we'll talk more about those, but basically uh, Paul wrote and called it flesh. Uh, <laughs> and he, he listed this long list of uh, uh, fleshly characteristics and ca uh, fleshly works in Galatians chapter 5, uh, and it, basically it's hatred and anger and malice and all kinds of things, and well, I, I, a flesh is kind of hard to get your uh, mind wrapped around it, so I like to just call it negative things or the negativity in our lives, and so we're in that process of getting rid of those negative things, and the next time we'll talk about how you get rid of those things to to reduce that gap between where we are. I said, we, this is where we are. We're in the process of uh, being conformed to his image. And, and so uh, we, we want to go on to the goal. And, and the reason I wanted to put this image up there is I want you to see that it's easy to get confused about what your identity really is. You, you were a caterpillar. Now you're something between a caterpillar and a butterfly. And so it's easy to get our mind confused about who we are. And one day we'll wake up and think we're one thing. And the next day we'll wake up and think we're another thing. And that's the reason identity is real important. See, the reason we look at identity and we want to find out what our true identity is, if we don't know our true identity, we cannot make known the true identity of God. Let, let me say that again. If we do not know our true identity, we cannot make known. And this is why what we're on the earth to do is to make known the true identity of God. But if we do not know our true identity, we cannot make his true identity known. So it's a very important concept. And that's the reason we need to know and know where we are on this scale. Are we still in the old, uh, the past? The past still has some uh, claims on our lives and we uh and so are we is that the where the starting point is that where we are a lot see a lot of times we want to go back to that point and think well that's who i am or even uh think well we're we're here we're somewhere in the transformation process so we're not yet not a caterpillar but we're not yet a butterfly so that's who where we really are but the true identity, and that's what we're really getting at today, mm -hmm. is what heaven says about you, what, what God is speaking Hallelujah. about you. Hallelujah. And how are we going to know who our, what our true identity is? Well, it's what the word of God, it's about the word of God being revealed in our lives. Uh, and 
and uh, it's about the prophetic words that uh, are spoken over you, the words that you've heard yourself from God, these words. And, and this is not about the scriptures that you, that you uh, memorize, because a lot of people can quote a lot of scriptures, but it's not about the scriptures, it's about the Christ coming forth, the living Christ coming forth. And see, that's the butterfly. That's the living Christ. So that, that's the place that we're going for. And, and we have some claims on our lives from some of the things from the past that we want to get rid of. And we're going to talk about that uh, in two weeks. Uh, but today we're focusing on uh, this identity and how or how is our identity defined? Well, your identity is defined by your relationship with the Lord, mm. by your relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord. And, and I want to just go into that for, for a moment, but it's also defined by your destiny and, and where you are in your destiny. And, uh, and, and see what we're talking about here is a series and it goes from identity to destiny. So we're, tonight, its focus is not on destiny, but it's a part of the thing that defines your destiny defines your identity, your true identity. And I want to uh, just say that when we understand our identity, who we really are, uh, it, it, we, it's all about who we are in Christ. And, mm. you know, Christ purchased you. You belong mm. to yeah. Christ. You you are not your own. You've Amen. been bought with a price. A, Amen. The Amen. price was uh, incredibly high. Uh, mm -hmm. It was it was so much, uh, and that he purchased you, and so you are no longer your own. So this is a part of your identity. It's your relationship uh, with the Lord, and I want you to know that he, you were that special treasure that he found. And yes, he sold yes, everything. everything. He gave everything for you. So that's that's your identity. And we'll we'll talk more about that in, in a moment. But for you to understand your identity, it really relates to two different things, and that, that is encountering God and then a process. So it's those two words, an encounter and a process. And the, and the encounter may come first or the process may come first. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, when uh, they told us our daughter was going to die when she was 14, um, months 14 months old, and incidentally, she's here today, and I guess she's 43. She Hallelujah. Us today, Amy Elizabeth, uh, and I believe she's uh, 43, if I've got my math right. Uh, <laughs> but when she was 14 months, they said she was going to die. Mm -hmm. Well, when that, when they told, when the doctor said, and a lot of different doctors said that, that she was going to die, oh, Sherry and I had no faith. We, we were just in, uh, mm -hmm. we've been in uh, churches all of our life, but they never taught us anything or, or we'd never learned anything about faith or healing or Holy Spirit or those kinds of things. So we went through a process of several months of just learning and, and getting a relationship with the Lord. So that, that was that process. And then one night, uh, as we were in our living room and she was uh, screaming with a high temperature, uh, and, and we just turned our back away from her and, and turned our attention on the Lord Jesus the Lord. Christ. And when we did, uh, we had an encounter that night because mm -hmm. there was a, a, an orb, uh, a light uh, shone over her there for a few seconds or milliseconds and, and gave her an immunity system and and her temperature became normal and she went to sleep as mm -hmm. we were praising the Lord. So we went through a process and that process uh, went several months and then we had that encounter. But there've been other times when we had the encounter first and then a process. Mm -hmm. uh, there've been times that the Lord has spoken to me and told me who I was. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, he would tell me things that would just astonish me and it just blow my mind. And uh, because I knew I wasn't what he was telling me I was. I, I knew I, was, I had no clue what he was saying. And, and yet, so the encounter came first in those cases. And uh, and through a, a process of, year, of years of learning what he was talking about on that day, mm -hmm. uh, he, he would meet me in a particular place. Maybe it was out in the woods where I was uh, uh, fasting and praying and seeking him. 
and hugging his tree. <clears throat> then uh, he would <laughs> tell me things that would be astonishing to me, and I knew that they weren't really true at the time. But this is what he's saying to me. And, and so what, what we see heaven, uh, what we see from heaven is that heaven calls you some things that uh, you're not possibly yet, but we are becoming whom God says we are. So God says we're already these. We're already there. We've already arrived. Mm -hmm. And yet we know where we are. <laughs> you are here. Remember the, the picture. We, we know where we are. And God says things beyond that. He, he, he talks about things beyond that. And so what we're doing now, we're in the process of becoming whom God says that we already are. Uh, that's, that's kind of a, 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 a hard to get the mind around. Uh, but God sees us complete mm -hmm. because we are 